I recently got to hang out with Sarah Lee, bass player mm -hmm. of Living in Clip. But unfortunately, she's not here right now. We got this guy. We should have. How did you. How did you... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, babes and babas, Andy Suchansky. Filling in for. Stowe is in stone. Chan is in chance. We should have a cutout of Sarah. That's what we should do. Yes. I could use one of those most days. Cut out of Sarah. Sarah Lee. 100% of the time. Seriously, we would all feel happier. She was, uh, uh, would talk incessantly about the goat farm. She wanted cheese farm, the goat cheese. Right. She did eventually have goats. Wow. She may still right. have those goats. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Dreams do come true, Andy. Welcome. Yes. All gratitudes to Sarah Lee. Yes. Yeah, which is also how I know both of you. Yeah. Right. She introduced us. Yeah. Sarah Lee, who That's rescued right. me at the tender age of 18 mm. in Europe. Wow. Trying to traipse around after the Thompson twins as their photographer. Yeah. Wow. My way in the world by myself. She yeah. was very worried about me. No. And she took me under her wing and made sure I was safe every day, mm. even though I didn't ask for that. Mm. Just motherly nature. Right. Yeah. We're still friends to this day, all of us. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So how did how did you meet Sarah? How did you all join musical forces? Yeah, I mean, I I think it, I I met her at um, Newport Newport Folk Festival. She was there with the girls, mm -hmm. the Indigo Girls, and it was her fortieth birthday. Were you there? Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, I. I knew the I knew Amy really, and um, Amy they Ray. invited us. Yeah, Amy Ray, and they invited us to Sarah's little fortieth birthday hang in the hotel room with Jimmy from New Orleans be mm -hmm. bartending. In his in the hotel in his the, own yeah, hotel room. Yeah, oh, it was my hotel. Oh, that oh. was your hotel room. <laughs> Boom. See? See? Wow. <laughs> So good. Was, those parties are amazing. It was great. And then, I don't know, yeah. Just lured her in. We decided mm -hmm. we needed even more low end. Not enough. Because <laughs> it wasn't enough to Step shake hard. the ceiling with an acoustic guitar. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just thinking, okay, random edit here, but not only did you have to pick a good performance, for living in clip you had to make sure it wasn't distorted and I have a really bad habit of mumbling when I drum so there's also a tape a recording that Ani gave me for Christmas of me making like ah. Ooh, ma, ooh, ma. something <laughs> some mother issues happening a lot of mm, ma, mm, ma, so, mm. <laughs> How that album yeah. was made is beyond me. Yeah. Turn yeah. down Andy's grunting enough <laughs> to hear the lyrics. Yeah. Question mark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was pretty simple. Simple shit, though. Mm -hmm. That we were doing. There was not a lot of trickery. Right. I mean, I don't even I think I just plugged that fucking acoustic DI in mm -hmm. and that was the sound of the guitar. Mm -hmm. No amps. I'm listening to the album this week, like just realizing things would come back on things we would do at a show, like something brand new. And if we liked it, we'd keep it. Mm -hmm. So there were tiny things that kept growing at all times like why would I choose and I was like oh yeah right and it was just I loved that 10,000 hour thing going on that we had mm -hmm. that was right that was amazing we were in the middle of our 10,000 hour mm -hmm. yeah. pursuit together yeah. I always think of you as the like Mr. Theater like I was like coming from a, well, so we'll just stumble onto the platform and we'll start playing. Mm -hmm. And then when we played long enough, we'll stop. And you're like, no, okay, here's the, I have an idea. 
to, we'll be backlit and we'll come on dressed as each other, but we'll be facing the other way, except your mouth will be on the back of your head and then you'll sing, but my part, and, all, and then our heads will explode and then we'll start the show. Like you always had some kind of like vision. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you can know, let's, let's start in the middle and play our way out. Or Sub was like, oh, Mr. Idea Balls. It was like, how about? You know, between, in, in, you know, when the drive was 500 yeah, miles, yeah, lots somewhere in the middle there was, hey. What a creative time. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why don't you play drums and I'll play guitar? Oh, we did that once actually, to pass the wheel and yeah. if you broke a yeah, string. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, or I would do a drum solo. You know, yeah. Did, so Ani could change the string before she had people. Or, she before she had yeah. people. Or crowd surf, or whichever crowd surf. came first. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, isn't that funny? We, like yeah. back in the day when I was I was mm. way into crowd surfing. That's fun shit. Oh. But you're the only other dude on stage. Right. I mean I guess when Sarah showed up maybe I was still doing that. You but, were. Yeah. Wow. Well. That's kind of hilarious, though. Just keep playing! Mm -hmm. Bye! Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, yeah. I've got hand drum kit. Like, make yeah. it, just make it as creative as possible. Yeah. To a little and hope folk she singer. comes back. <laughs> hope, hope she comes back. Do you remember the night in Toronto that you jumped into the crowd and they dropped you? No, I don't. And might explain a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> Head Your trauma. issues. My issues. Yeah. It was like the whole mosh pit, of course, was like chicks my size. Oh, yeah. And Andy was like, oh, I'm doing this. And this so is... I'm just like, ah, ching, 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 ching. And he's like, Woo! That's awesome. Yeah. They were, they were, they were little. They were. They were little. <laughs> they were littler they were than they appeared. <laughs> this is before high litigation. Before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What oh. gave you the right <laughs> to fling yourself? And we were in our 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. That was a lot wow. bigger. When we had the right to do all sorts of things. There's some amazing photographs in the living clip booklet. Like you and I and Sarah and I looked at myself like, oh wow, I was like bigger, but the pounding the fuck out of things every day. So that would do it. But I loved it. It was like, it was such an exciting to, like that touring was amazing, you know. But yeah, it was exciting. Mm -hmm. People were excited. Oh yeah. They. It was like a. It's like a new community forming. Mm -hmm. And I did like I seeing you play to five people and then kind of go, oh, there's seven people here now, or fourteen, or and they all have merch. Then it was a no-brainer, right? It was just like, all right, it was exciting. Like, I need going, oh, so what are you doing for the next six months? And it was like, no, yeah, no, we're touring. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. So. And it just didn't let go of us. Yeah. For a long time. Mm -hmm. What was that, what was that um, time period like in 96-ish when things started scaling up in terms of people coming to the show and big crew family and you know other energies emerging yeah still not a big crew by the time living in clip yeah. era we were on a bus that was a freaking miracle uh -huh. and we had two sound guys and uh but yeah i was still doing the yeah. one guitar i was my own yeah i was rocking it with one, maybe that started bringing a backup guitar around then. Hmm. But it wasn't nearly the fucking circus I got going on now. No. With the, I mean, I think I was just getting into the open tuning craziness, making that huh. hard. But I never had a tuner on stage. Never, I still don't. Okay. Yeah, right, we wow. were, it was like, yeah, changing my own strengths. You tell a little story or what? Yeah. <laughs> Do a little dance. Yeah, make it, make them. 
I have to remember when we showed? Remember when we pulled up to? I I can vividly see us pulling up to the Orpheum, I think, in Boston, and and like like that venue in New York. It's like Irving Plaza Irving. in our little minivan, and it's just you and me. Yeah, it's like one guitar, a couple of drums, and they're like, you know, it's a sold out show. Yeah, we had nobody with us. Yeah. It's kind of and so always, wild. They, of course, they'd come to the guy, me, for questions. So I'm like, <laughs> ask her. <laughs> yeah. No idea. That's right. Yeah. So the first time I came to one of your shows was in April 96, and Heidi Ho was with you. Hmm. Oh, yeah. She had stepped behind the, the footlights. Yeah, good old Heidi Ho. She was following the tour coast to coast with her cat. Oh, yeah. Back in whatever, 96, and, and yeah. helping out our merch yeah. seller. And then we found that when, when Heidi was there helping, the numbers were just tighter. <laughs> it just all got really- Professional. Spot on. So I was like, okay, you stay. Yeah. Good old Heidi Ho. Then. And finding a road manager, uh, that uh, I seemed kind of endless for a while. Like finding the right one took a yeah. while too. So. Well, I was like still in the mode of, well, let me call my friends. Right. Yeah. You know, what do you, of course, back in that day, there's no internet. Like, what are you going to look up road manager? Right. Or us, you know? It's just, <laughs> who do I know? Yeah. Fucking nobody. And, the, and a, an actual roadmap, like a real yes. map. Yes. Okay, who can read this? <laughs> there was a lot of the, the the way that we would get there before the bus, like right up to the bus, mm -hmm. was we just knew the town we were going to. I was usually yeah, and then and then roll down the window and just be like, do you know where the college is? Mm -hmm. Just start asking, what what college? I don't, the big one, like, get to the college. Do you know where there's a show tonight? Yeah. yeah. Scratch and sniff, like, fucking direction, the, the pieces of paper from this. It's just like, oh, God. Yeah. It's all so exhausting. Mm-hmm. There was some, and we were on the road always. Besides Christmas, that's yeah. it. There was no time off. Uh, talk a little bit about your relationship with all the amazing people coming to your show. Hmm. Yeah, we made a lot of friends. A we, lot. We were very accessible. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Do you still have friends from the Ani tour? I'm sh Yeah, that, of course. Yeah. Life did not suck in any shape or form. <laughs> yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. And just, you know, I mean, really, I just meeting people that were really just doing stuff on the ground up was mm -hmm. amazing, politically mm -hmm. or grassroots or whatever. And it was like, yeah, that was one of the other great parts of coming home and telling all these stories of like, oh, I met all these amazing people that are mm -hmm. doing things that are way more left of center than anybody had ever, you know what I mean? Like. It was inspiring. Mm -hmm. So these are pockets of humanity mm. out there. And, you know, of course, Utah. You and Utah make yeah. a, a record. You know, it's like it yeah. all makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then so many of them have also gone on to be leaders in movements and in other mm -hmm. positions of influence for making change. What What do you think about all of that? It's amazing. It's very cool yeah. to think that you know. Us radical counterculture youths uh -huh. now have jobs and can make mm. change in all these different spheres. It's very cool to encounter people, yeah. grown people now in positions of relative power mm -hmm. who were like, who were there with us mm -hmm. and still carry that you know, whatever, that revolutionary bent. Like, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to sh shift the game. 
in this sphere, that sphere. I love all the letters that I get, you know, with all the stories of this is how I intersected with your music and mm -hmm. this is how it altered the course of my life and this is what I'm doing now and it's so great. And of course at the same time there was, um, you know, right in that living in Clip era was major labels coming to sniff around the scene. Remember the, the IRS and mm -hmm. the, yeah, and like showing, you know, flying people in to see us mm -hmm. rocks on a little bar and those like awkward, I can picture us standing out behind in some alley with a couple of label people and we're yeah. trying to, after the show, like, so do you like stuff? You know, like, God, is this, are we, and then going, you know, be going to LA and going to the offices and meeting the people who were totally cool people, you yeah. know, but just like walking in the offices and being like, right. doesn't feel like the way to be a revolutionary. <laughs> just, yeah, I don't know what gets compromised, but something. So, and I was thinking about that very thing, like the way they make records wouldn't have worked with, like can you imagine making a record and them going, okay, we're gonna put this out in a year to change something or you're set it up or even, it's like, because you're, you put out records when you wanted to make records and that is day and night and I thought about that kind of had one of those light bulb moments at one point and thought, right, I, I, how would that, that wouldn't have even worked with your DNA. Yeah. Like, this is my statement now with each album. Yeah. And, and they, right, I, like you, you were suggesting, they, they wouldn't move nearly fast enough for me huh. at the time. It was like, boom, 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 boom. Every record was like, oh, what, what record? I fucked that one up. Let's make a better one. Mm. You know, it's like two a year, you know, and, yeah. and, and we would play the shit right up until the album was made mm -hmm. and then it'd yeah. be on to the new shit, yeah. you know, is it not yeah. like, put it out, yeah, set it up and put it out and then yeah. go and m market those songs and keep playing them and, and here's the single, even the idea of a single then, like, yeah gave me heebie-jeebies. Right, yeah, not I you I don't know all. why. Anything yeah. that smacked of just commodity, music as commodity, I was like, yeah. t-shirts. That was hard for you. Uh, yeah, just all seemed, seemed uncool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how we compromised. I think that was, yeah, that was around the era of, okay, I mean, I think Not A Pretty Girl was the first t-shirt I made. It said, Not A Pretty Girl mm -hmm. <laughs> on it. Yeah. And and it was like, because if you want to afford a sound engineer, yeah, you got to sell something. Around Living in Clip, it was like, thank goodness. I mean, you remember, we were getting desperate right before the bus. It was just too much. Mm -hmm. We were doing too much. We were driving too much. You know. I remember the moment we stepped onto a, our first tour bus and just thinking all the miles that you and I had done in the van or the car or the car, the van. And it was like, okay, we are so much safer now. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we can. Sleep. But also now that you put me back there, I remember what was lost too. It was like connect. We were let, we were disconnected. We right. instantly, Right. Bubble. It was like an instant bubble, the tour bus, which is great because it, it started to get frenzied and we needed to be safer in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But it was like you felt that it was the tactileness of the right. touring, you know, it was no longer like you saw the landscape change and you smelled the air change going yeah. from the desert and you know... Yeah. how far it was and you bookstore oh, felt I know it bookstore. yeah and you pulled over yeah. and you discovered that and this yeah. and that and you had conversations and all that just got pushed away that's a funny 
transition, but necessary for like sustaining mm -hmm. the energy that it takes at some point. I mean, which is not to say that fucking musicians don't just rock the van right. decade after decade. And that, I, you know, I won't, any of us won't be back in one. Right. It was a big, it was a big time of change and growth. It was like, that was, yeah, living in clip, with that year that Sarah was around, it was like, yeah, the audiences, instead of going from like seven to 14 people, it would be like 25 people. And then we come back a year later and it's, you know, 525 people. And it, it was, things were getting exponential. By the fall of 20, oh, sorry, 20. By the fall of 1996, it was two nights at the Boston Orpheum. Yeah. That's thousands of people. Yeah. And two nights at the Beacon. Wow. That's yeah. like 5,000 people. And, yeah. You know, so. I, yeah. Yeah. And that happened, you know, quick, you know, like slow, but quick, you know, like, like any, any evolution, there's like a long, long, long development. And then there's a mutation, you know, it's like, right. it was a long 10 year. And then it, there was the, the, the gene mutation and suddenly shit was like, ah. So. 25 years later, re-release, a little bit of remastering, redesign. How are you feeling about this re-presentation? Well, so yeah, I have kids, one of whom is 15, one of whom is nine. And through them, I experienced the world in a little, like I have a window. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I tap into the, like the music on Living a Clip and all those kind of my records of, and they are so crude. <laughs> you know, I mean, not, you know, like as in not, not body. I mean, like, I mean, they're that too. But, um, you know, compared to like the super pristine, polished, high impact, never a dull nanosecond production, you know, that the music of the age of computers and editing, mm -hmm. pro, you know, it's just, yeah. this was, there was no editing, there's no auto tuning or any, you know, it's just, and it's so very raw, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I, you know, I think I was listening to a snippet while we were doing this reissue and the re, and like one of my kids was in the room and I could just hear like, you know, this sounds like the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, you know what I'm saying? No. Okay, good. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Oh. Yeah. We had done, mean, we'd done the work, like we said, and, and this live album was made and I think it sounds incredible. Like for the, yeah, I mean, the every four bars having something new that would not work. So this whole other world, but it sounds awesome. The remaster is awesome. And here's a weird, uh, so pod, one, one of my favorite podcasts called Sound Opinions. Two guys from Chicago, they've been around forever. And it's the two music editors of both papers in Chicago and they voted Living in Clip like I think top 10 or 20 live records of all time for them Aww. and suddenly but here it is like I'm you know I'm listening to my podcast and it's like I recognize that yeah. drum wait <laughs> what is that infernal that caterwauling <laughs> wait who would drop it like that like, he's off a bit no it was like oh wow and I was like yeah I don't know if I called you or texted you mm -hmm. right away and I was like this is an amazing thing well yeah that I mean that record Living Clip it really did I think that was a big part of that exponential jump of the audience size and mm. uh, going from the van to the bus and yeah like it it people connected with that record which is such a huge blessing I, I think there was some window into the spirit that we were bringing on stage and yeah that you couldn't you know you didn't necessarily 
know from the studio records, but like when you heard us talking and joking and interacting. Yeah, that's it's like oh okay. Yeah, I don't know. Although where some, that... I think sometimes when we were so overtired, those were the most amazing shows. The best. The best. Yeah. Yeah, the level of humor and just yeah, when you're just mm -hmm. cracked open because you have you're in an altered state of sleeplessness. Yeah, I it was hilarious, and I'm glad there's a, there are snippets of it on the on this on that record. Like I haven't I don't know why I thought of this one, but I remember just in the middle of some epic song, just like stopping, drumming. And you just kind of like going with it. And I remember like it was a like, yeah, kind of thing you and I kept. And it's that kind of thing where we, it was the, the eye contact. It was if Bonnie's butt was moving. It was like, okay, <laughs> this is a good tempo. Yeah. Like if, and it was pushing each other. And I think the pushing each other to the part of just because we knew that it was for a, a collective thing. It was for the better, for art. Like it was like, it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. And so I love the fact that, you know, that happened when it did and that we did this. Yeah, you could feel, you know, like even, even when it was just you and me, like you could feel certainly like, I, I just don't think there was a lot of places that, like, young women could go to listen to their experience and their perspective. Mm -hmm. And and it, and it wasn't just a woman singing from a woman's perspective. It singing to other women. Mm -hmm. Like, you exist, and you're the only person I'm talking to right now. Or you are the, you know, you are the you in this song which doesn't mean that I'm not also singing to men or that men can't translate like women always mm -hmm. do, right? Uh -huh. it, you know, through culture, through patriarchal culture. But like, I think that palpable energy of people being seen where they hadn't been was yeah. like in the air. And so I think not only was it important, you know, especially for women and, and queers, in a, in a world where they didn't feel seen till they found us, you know, but like the fact that there's also a dude on stage, yeah. right? Who, you know, just that feeling of not only do I, do I exist and do I have a safe space, but okay, a dude can be in this safe space. Like we can, you know, it was all very healing, I think, you know, ah, in this way, that's gonna make me cry. And like, you know, in the queer affirmation, but you're not just a dude, you're a straight dude, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, there was a unity and diversity kind of vibe yeah. Yeah. that we brought. And people found each other in the audience. Yeah. Like all kinds of relationships and friendships were made at your shows. Yeah. I loved seeing that. I absolutely adore, like, but just seeing people together, like, oh, these people have been now traveling together. One of the things I loved doing was putting on a hoodie and walking through the crowd before the, sh you know, in front of the venue and kind of, kind of, get, you know, getting the vibe of, because Ani couldn't do that. She's tiny. <laughs> Signature tiny. Spotter. <laughs> Spotter. Yeah, it's putting on a hoodie and kind of going, oh, wow. It's like you're suddenly seeing, you know, I don't have tickets. I. Yeah. I, I thumbed it, you know, 500 miles sign, you know, and kind of going, no, you, you're on the list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just, you know, I don't have any younger brothers. And it was like a, a like, I was like living through that. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. There's a lot of you know, mentoring. There's a lot of mm. young, there was a lot of us struggling mm -hmm. in a culture of exclusion. Right. And yeah. Mm -hmm. The people who had a lot of emotional, mm -hmm. it meant a lot to get there and it meant yeah. a lot. And yeah, you'd find people who were devastated yeah. at not feeling like they were going to miss out on that moment of feeling whole. People still just trying to thread the needle of existing just enough within, you know, yeah. 
still this kind of not feeling like you can just challenge all the systems, you know? Like you just have to work within them, even though it's fucking crushing you and inhibiting mm -hmm. you and, and you might not even be able to handle it. Yeah, and we were, and then there was, so there was the like, the Ani crowd that was just taking shape. And then there was like the folk festival world <laughs> that we, mm -hmm. we were also sort of on the folk circuit. We had these folk promoters and we would show up at folk festivals and, and that was a whole other kind of growing pain, you know, this newer, edgier, punkier, more yeah. in your face kind of politics and storytelling and uh, some the reticent faction the right. folk fascists and then the oh, and then the renegades <laughs> the folk. you know the utahs and the peets yeah. who are just like fuck yeah yeah it's amazing do it you know yeah so aside from all the production stuff you were talking about and there's really really strong and important messaging in the songs on living a clip that are relevant today is there anything that pops to mind in terms of where you feel like right now there are songs or themes even in that record from 1996-7? I mean, I guess I don't, you know, I've never really thought of my writing or the songs or my mission or my purpose or anything like, and people have always asked me over the years about what issues are on your mind what mm. issues are you speaking to now or what you know are you in themes to me it's all just one fucking issue it's one theme you know it's like be kind <laughs> you know yeah. and the face the the subject matter is not it's like the subjects change they don't change you know but it's all the same it's just one issue like unto others <laughs> as you would you know it's just it's all really simple so in that sense yeah the, it's, it's i'm writing the same fucking songs now <laughs> and they're all and the ones that i'm still playing from living in clip era are you know it's it's an eternal theme i think yeah Sometimes the lyric, your lyrics piss me off. They're so fucking good. I was listening to Gone on the Way Here and I was like, you know when you just hear stuff kind of from a way for like not hearing it for a while and then you hear it and it's like, fuck, fuck you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you are touching my pain. <laughs> uh, you know, oh. it's not fair. That's all I'll say to that. Yeah. Let's leave it with fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's end this interview with you. Yeah, yeah you. you know what? Fuck you too, yeah. Andy. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>